Well, let's get more now on the ongoing G20 summit that's taking place in Japan. High on the agenda will be the situation in the Gulf as tensions simmer between the US and Iran. Uh, also this morning, Prime Minister Theresa May met President Putin, who ruffled feathers in an article claiming that liberalism was now obsolete. Uh, well, Gulf tensions, trade wars, climate change and ideological challenges. And here to pick it all apart with, uh, with me is foreign affairs writer uh, Tim Marshall. Uh, this is quite, an in, uh, quite a world event, isn't it, this particular G20? I mean, let's start off with Theresa May's meeting with President Putin. I mean, is there any point in her holding that meeting? Yes, to say publicly we still hold these values and we still feel this position, especially read the Novichuk. So she, so, so she thinks she can sign off her duties yeah. and think, you know, right to yeah. the very end, I told him that yes. wasn't good enough. But a liberal democracy has to put these things out in the public and say, this is us. Now, she knows that Putin is not about to ring up the Kremlin and say, get those two guys on a plane and send them to Britain. It's just not going to happen. Nothing will come of that. So the point of it is the He's statement. Signaling. And that plays into this thing that he's saying, oh, liberalism is obsolete. There is a crisis uh, of, of uh, confidence in democracy in, in many parts of the world, and he again sees this and tries to drive a, a wedge into it. You've already got places like Hungary, which call themselves illiberal democracies. Mm. You know, these are new times. And so Mrs. Mrs May is trying to hang on, not to the old times, but to the values of liberal democracy. Because he's picking up on things that will resonate with a lot of people, isn't he? He's saying, you know, we've treated democracy as this ideal. Uh, but if you look at it, you know, there's rising tension between haves and have-nots. Yes. There's climate change crisis. There have been several financial mm. crises which have affected the whole world. And you could say that that is the product of the democratic world in which we live. But that's... That, that's not only about liberal democracy and the crisis of confidence, that's also about a potential crisis of confidence in um, capitalism. Because if capitalism isn't working for large amounts of people, why would they possibly support it and believe in it? Mm. So it's a sort of dual challenge to strengthen democracy, but also not to forget about the people that are getting left behind and the problems of capitalism. And if you don't have capitalism with a human face, you will not have capitalism uh, eventually. Or you'll have the crony capitalism that Putin likes. But over all this is this big orange elephant. Well, I was just going to say, because... There, How there, do you know who I'm talking about, a, Sam? a panoply of uh, very serious global issues yeah. to deal with, and central to every single one of them is President yes. Trump. Yes, because if the Xi-Trump meeting... Uh, I don't think it will, but it dis if it disintegrated uh, into rancour, then you have got the, the potential of the trade war. Now, if there is this massive trade war, Everything else on that agenda, including climate change, and uh, are they of Japan, who's hosting it, is very, very keen to get some commitments about plastic waste in the oceans. But to, to, to commit to uh, things to reduce uh, the problems of climate change, you need thriving economies. You're not going to get thriving economies if there's a massive trade war between the two big beasts. And so that's why th that meeting and what flows from it is the key to everything else that's in the G20. Because the G20 is something of a talking shop, but around it are these incredibly important meetings. Trump's having nine of them. Uh, and everything else flows from that. I personally think that Trump is signalling a degree of compromise. He has actually stared down Xi. The Chinese have hinted they're going to make various compromises. Coming into this, the South China Post says that there's going to be a truce. And Mr Trump has said, you know what, maybe I won't have 25% tariff imports on China. Maybe it'll only be 10%. You know, I think they are signalling, let's try to get a truce in the trade war and move on with the economic. And that's the big thing about the G20, that... Without that succeeding, nothing else succeeds. Indeed. OK, well, we'll have to see what market reaction to that meeting yeah. is on Monday. All right, Tim, very good to have you in the Thank studio. You. Thank you.